Kathleen Yeh, a psychologist from the Reed Clinic on the Central Coast. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Scott. Good to be here. And you're so lovely. You're the furthest thing from a psychopath there is. I hope so. You're very caring. <laughs> Actually, I think I need a bit of the psychopathy. I, I worry about confrontation. Whenever I get into a, you know, sometimes you've got to be forceful and... I mean, the good thing about being a psychopath is that there's no sense of guilt or remorse. Well, that's right. And I get really guilty if I have a blue with someone. I just, you know, I hate confrontation and I end up stewing on it, not sleeping and worrying about it. But if you're a psychopath, no, that just doesn't that's happen. Right. You can go and call someone anything, do anything you want. You know, right. sleep with a yep. hundred women yep. and, and not worry about the consequences, have no guilt, have no remorse. Right. If you're a true psychopath, you just totally self-centered, is that right? Yeah. I think there's been a lot of media attention recently. I think I'm the other way. I think I'd worry too much about... That's, at least you know you're not a psychopath, so that's good news. <laughs> yeah, but it, in some ways, you, you know... You, It'd be nice to have a little bit of it, not having to yeah, worry so much. Yeah, be able to switch off in somehow. When you have a conflict, you just yeah. get all... You yeah. stew about it, you wonder if you could have done it this way, and you wonder about the other person and yeah. you well, know, what other people will think of you and all that. And, and that's an anxiety and that's something that <laughs> psychopaths don't have. They don't have anxiety? No. no. You know, they've done lots of you know, research and mm. they measure them, you know, putting electrodes and various yeah, things sort of. to measure their anxiety level. And it's usually measured through sweat, mm. you know, sweaty pants. And what they've found is that psychopaths don't have sweat. They don't have anxiety? No. Mar right. Marvellous. But I guess you know, the recent media attention came about, you know, psychopaths have traditionally been researched only in the jail population. Yeah. And recently there was a documentary that came out by Ian Walker, who um, docu um, did a short documentary on the first willing participant who was a self-professed psychopath mm. slash narcissist. And since then it has opened up this whole new arena and this whole um, lot of research into the level of psychopathy, particularly in corporations. Yeah, they, they tend to, uh, I remember uh, talking to a Canadian researcher, Dr. Hare, I think. Yeah, amazing, uh, who, who came up with this psychopath checklist, That's right. the B-Scan B, yeah. which is a really useful tool, because apparently these people are particularly drawn to the big water watering holes, like Sydney or London or, you know, the big cities. And the big corporations. The big corporations, yeah. and they do really, really well, because they're yeah. totally ruthless. That's right. They, Manipulate, deceive, They'll con. climb the corporate yep. ladder on tops of the heads of all of their yep. victims. Absolutely. But you can you can suss them out, can't you? Because they leave this trail of destruction right. through their personal life. Yeah. I mean, you can actually have a look on the internet, PCLR, um, which is... Um, a psychopath checklist mm. to have a look to see if you know the person that you're thinking about fits the criteria. Um, I guess you know my interest in it, and um, the reason I brought it up today is I've had a few clients just recently in the local area that have been victims of the corporate psychopath. So mm. I kind of wanted to <laughs> highlight it, you know, for their sake and for other people who have been victims of um, mm. this kind of. Problem. So how do we root them out? How do we we get rid of them? Uh, you know, from from powers of responsibility. Uh, positions of power and responsibility because, as I say, they leave this trail of destruction. They, they uh, leave broken lives. They, they uh, often, you know, will go through many relationships. Uh, I guess, the, I mean, the, one of the main, you know, and then the reason of talking about it is to actually, uh, is knowledge and highlighting what they do so that people have more awareness of what's happening to them if they're a victim. Mm -hmm. And also knowing that there's help out there as well because a lot of people don't get help. Um, they don't know that it's available, and what they do is they internalise it um, to think that it's their fault or that there's something wrong with them. Um, I've worked for a few of them. Yeah, I thought I had. In radio, Jesus, yeah, radio is full of them. Yes, I can Commercial imagine. radio, I'm, yeah. you know, being a young bloke, I remember being sacked by these bad managers who just pull you in and say, "Oh no, good, you're fired." And, and, yeah. and you always think, "How could you do that?" But yeah. you know, you look back and you realise that they've. They fit that mould. Oh yeah, I mean, in my last life, when I was younger, I used to be in hospitality, mm. and you can most of the chefs, I think there's like a <laughs> there'd be pots and pans flying all over the kitchen. Yeah, they'd be yeah. losing the plot. Well, you yeah. look at the way that that um, celebrity chef bloke with the foul mouth. Oh yeah, Gordon Ramsay. You know, and, and yeah, you yeah. Think, oh totally, gee, you know, totally, there's... no empathy whatsoever. No cutting. Yeah, really bad, and he'll he'll say things to people that are just you know, devastating for a normal person to be told, you know, the, the things that he said, you know, a lot of people might go and, and, and you know, self-harm or even oh, kill themselves. absolutely. 
Um, and you, you wouldn't think there'd be any remorse at all with that bloke. I oh, mean, no. uh, even even anything. in his no. his family life, he's been caught out a number of times, and um, yeah. you know, you think, well, yeah. he's just trying to, to wiggle wiggle out of it. That's right. Uh, well, they don't ever accept responsibility for their behaviour, mm. ever. You know, one way of telling is that they never, you know, they never say sorry. Yeah. Um, and I think, but often it's not even as aggressive as that, and obvious. You know, often it's done in very subtle ways. Um, I had a client recently. Well, he, he kind of was part aggressive, but some of the bullying was also very subtle in the form of isolating um, this particular client who was for confidential, um, confidential reasons, reasons can't that no. name, but she wanted her story told. Um, so, you know, just by, you know, not acknowledging her in the morning and saying hello to everybody else in the office, hmm. you know, organising meetings that she should have been a part of without telling her, you know, holding her responsible for jobs that weren't that had nothing to do with her, like the bins weren't empty, and losing the pot, the bins weren't empty, and slamming his fist on the table, and huge acts of aggression. Uh, yeah. They're really good liars too, aren't they? Oh. So, so he would yeah. no doubt lie, lie about her to, to other management oh. or whatever, and, and uh, could do it with no remorse. So right. you're a great liar if yes. you're a psychopath. And Where you or I would be, you just couldn't do it because no. of the guilt. Oh. The guilt would get you. You, you couldn't. couldn't. You couldn't live with no, that's right, and because you have an em you know an empathy for your you know fellow human beings, mm. but you know then what they do is they start you know um, slandering if you like that the person to all the rest of the people mm. you know the colleagues, um, so they want to keep their distance as well, and it also sets up like a competitive environment where everybody's trying to get some sort of approval from this person so that they don't become a target. So the person becomes more and more isolated yeah. and then starts to internalise it, there's something wrong with me. And they get in, don't they? Yeah. They um, climb the corporate ladder very, very quickly yeah. because of this ruthlessness That's right. um, and, and lack of any, any morals. But um, how do we weed them out? How do you... Um, well, the best thing to do is for corporations and, and business people to, to get some of these diagnostic tests yes. like the B-Scan B or the one that you mentioned yes. and, and put these people through it and, and uh, make sure that there's none of that uh, psychopathic That's trait. Right. Starting just, you know, starting when you're recruiting people, um, you know, there's a, these tests and another one, PAI, um, that you can use as a standard assessment tool to, um, when you're recruiting people, that highlights different, er you know, problem areas, mm -hmm. you know, particularly personality disorder. We don't want to say too much about it because the psychopaths might be able to uh, to rot it and they might get onto it and find out. You know they're very hard to lie. Are they? Yeah, yeah it's very hard to lie on these things. They have mm. built-in lying detectors tests. Right. Um, and what will come up is if you positive impression management and negative impression ma management. So if you're trying to highlight yourself in a more positive way or in a more negative way, that will come up. I mean, God forbid if you've been married to one. Look, we'd love to talk to people of, of you know, no no name, no pactual, of course, but uh, you know, Sarah could. could uh, no doubt, take some calls. One three hundred nine two five triple two is the number. One three hundred nine two five triple two. Because when I sp spoke to this Canadian researcher, um, I think his name Dr. Hare, oh, yeah, yeah. incredible, Dr. Hare. incredible. Yeah. You know, he yeah. he just um, said everyone thought of the murderer, but in fact, you don't. It, this is kind of this is kind of worse. There are a lot of people who, who yeah. you know who uh, are quite well educated and sophisticated, and and they're, they're not necessarily going around killing people, but they still have all the traits of, of a They're assassinating people's characters, basically. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, emotional, psychological abuse rather than physical abuse. And the impacts, you know, the clients in particular that I've had, um, you know, huge anxiety, massive panic attacks, you know, carted off to a hospital thinking they're having heart attacks. And it just affects their self-esteem and the whole sense of identity just kind of crumbles. So, you know, when we're doing, when I'm doing therapy, um, one, you know, I'm trying to normalise the situation and put a structure around it so they can understand what's happened to them. Um, and also to try and rebuild their self-esteem and their sense of self. You know, worse, you know, if you were married to one and had to be with them every day, at least you have the opportunity of leaving the job if it gets <laughs> but, too But don't much. they sort of um, leave a bit of a, a trail through, through relationships as well? Oh, you, can, yeah. you can test it by, you know, multiple failed relationships. That's right. Um, yeah, that's right. I mean, sadly, you can't really um, get them to do a psych test before you have a relationship with them.